Welcome everybody to the new Live Webs webinar session by Arconberry Ritrama to the Organic as the New Black, where the design agency Morillas will focus on how organic tendencies are shaping the luxury sector. My name is Christian Galli and I'm the Global Business Development Manager of Arcomber Ritrama. Today we are presenting a new Live Webs dedicated to design together with Mark Morillas, CEO of Morillas, Clara de Souza, Art Director, and Pep Trias, Industrial Design Director. Our guest panelists will discuss the growing demand of luxury consumers for ethical practices and, and, and environmental justice in the luxury, as well as eco-friendly thinking on all the design processes, including designs that supports material, second life, and reuse. For any question you may have, uh, use the chat box, and we will try to answer to all of you at the end of the webinar. For all the questions left unanswered, we will contact you in a second time. For any kind of technical support or issue you may have during the webinar, our staff, it's at, the, it's at your disposal to give you the support you need. Simply write them using the chat box again. The webinar is recorded and all of you will receive the video in a dedicated follow-up email. And now I leave the floor to Morillas. Welcome. Thank you very much, Christian. Uh, on behalf of Morillas and, and, and all the team, we are really pleased to be with you today. Uh, of course, it's an honor to be presenting next to the uh, Arcomber Pitrama team. And uh, I hope that today, uh, the thing that we're gonna share with your audience and, and, and with the people that has gathered today around this organic is the new black, uh, would be interesting and would be useful uh, to try to look for a more sustainable uh, tomorrow and, and of course, for a better world. Uh, we're going to jump uh, to the presentation uh, here. And uh, first of all, we're going to go uh, with an introduction, uh, as we say in Spanish, hola, hola a todo el mundo. Uh, we're going we're gonna to explain a little bit about ourselves, who we are, what we do, and uh, why we are glad to be here with you. And uh, basically, the presentation today is focused around three main areas. Uh, a little bit about ourselves, about what we do. Second, uh, we're going to share with you uh, a, a specific, um, uh, a specific, let's say, content around our, our trend lab, which is called the Harvest. I'm going to explain about that later, and then we're going to share with you a specific business case that I think has been a success in terms of uh, mixing luxury and sustainability issues. Uh, and then we're going to jump. And after that, sorry, we're going to jump into the Q and A Q and A session. Uh, so, let's see. Okay. That being said, we're gonna we're gonna start uh, with a little bit uh, with with something different, with a video that tries to to present the uh, the way we work here at Morillas, uh, or our line of thinking and our guiding principles, and then uh, we're gonna keep up with the with the presentation. Sometimes there is a vast space with endless possibilities, infinite destinations to go, the absence of certainty. I am able to make you feel lost. I have limitless shapes. I can be irritating, provocative, demanding, terrifying, overwhelming, frustrating, stressful because I can be huge, tiny, surround you, become work, pleasure, music or art, often all at once. You will try to approach me rationally or maybe emotionally, then a gut feeling comes to you. You don't know where it comes from, but it really doesn't matter. Now you are mine. I am the blank page. Create something extraordinary. Okay, so that, that was a little bit our, our introduction our introduction. Uh line of thinking and it's related with our origins. No? In Morillas, we were born in 1962. It was, uh, the company was created by my grandfather, Antonio Morillas, which I didn't have the opportunity to meet. So I'm just in contact with him through his legacy. 
And in 1962, all of you know that Spain was going through really dark times. And uh, we had someone like my grandfather who stood up and said, listen, uh, through creativity, we can generate progress. It's time to think different. It's time to uh, do things differently. So since 1962 to today, to 2020, we have been trying to inspire great leaders in pushing the world forward uh, in terms of progress. And uh, I will, I, with this line of uh, thinking, I want to introduce the first concept. No? Sustainability in Morias is not only about the environment. The environment, of course, is a very important part because it has to do with the survival of our species. But sustainability has also, um, uh, it's very important in terms of uh, integration, reducing the gender gap, uh, trying to reduce the differences between the rich and the poor, trying to generate a shared uh, movement of progress. And that's why our purpose is try to push the world forward to inspire great leaders to do something, to act, to commit to a better world. Uh, as you can see in uh, Morillas, we, we, we are three generations. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so in 1962, I, my grandfather started, Antonio Morillas. Uh, then back then, uh, the visual context of the, of the epoch was very important. So I think we might say that we have a pioneer in our DNA. And this is uh, an important side of our culture, of our corporate, uh, cor um, corporate culture, sorry. Uh, Spaniards speaking English is quite absent, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, then in 1983, my father took over and uh, he understood that the brands needed more kind of a strategic approach, try to uh, solve business issues, business challenges through creativity. That's why uh, he then mixed uh, the previous team with a newer team with, which was specialized on, on strategic uh, problem solving. And then I took over the company in 2016 with a market, a digital marketing background. And uh, the idea is, of course, to try to come up with new technological solutions that try to build strong brand ecosystems um, without depending if, if we are talking about on or offline, which the frontier has now disappeared. Really quick, uh, we are a team of uh, almost 90 people. We have been uh, almost 60 years in service. We work uh, around five main cities. Barcelona, our headquarters are located here in Barcelona, uh, from which where I have the pleasure to, to talk to you today. Uh, we are running it around 900 projects per year. And uh, we, uh, our house uh, is, uh, is a home for more than 12 cultures which is very important because it gives us a strong cultural perspective about everything we do. That being said, we're going to start uh, entering into the first phase of the presentation. And the first phase of the presentation has to do with how do we understand luxury and sustainability. And uh, in order to understand in-depth fields as, such as those one, but also other ones, because uh, last year was a luxury, this year is sustainability, next year maybe it's going to be mobility uh, we created a trap men which we call uh, we a trend lab sorry which we call the harvest uh, which is a place where we try to interview great leaders and, and people that are related to or that they are trendsetters or maybe strong uh, creators or, or great entrepreneurs that have the ability to influence the world uh, in relation in relationship with the topic that we are trying to in, uh, to, to let's say to understand and and to 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 master, no? So the harvest is really quick. It's a, it's, a, it's a space to ask questions, to reflect and explore. So I invite everybody to visit the harvest in, in our site. But basically it's to understand what great leaders are doing and try to inspire other leaders uh, to build the businesses of tomorrow. Basically, the first question is why, why we chose luxury? We chose luxury because first of all, uh, the luxury sector is subject to, uh, to, to, to collective consumption and currently it's, it's, a, it's a sector in flux, no? Uh, first of all, because uh, once, uh, once um, let's say, 30, 40, 100 years uh, ago, it meant more something like accruing precious goods and opulent displays of wealth, rather than going for something experiential. But today, uh, the, main, the main drivers of category are, swift, are swifting, are, are changing, and uh, we are so interested in, the, in, this, in this change. No? And the second argument is because the luxury sector, of course, can play a very important role. Not only, of course, because they have a huge investment uh, uh, capability, but also because they are they are playing a very important role in terms of uh, cultural connection, uh, global inspiration. Uh, so uh, they are rooted in into some of our cultural development layers that I think 
well, um, they have a strong also responsibility in terms of deciding where the world wants to go. That being said, uh, we've interviewed different profiles. So the first part of the presentation, I'm going to try to share with you uh, different uh, verbatims from uh, these uh, top executives of luxury brands, global leaders such as Richard Branson, trend experts, designers, photographers, filmmakers. Uh, I'm going to try to give you a rich perspective about uh, how these great leaders and these great people uh, are seeing the world of luxury. And then we're going to jump into the sustain and how uh, into the connection with sustainability. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what I want to share with you the perspective of uh, Bella Adler, which is a very important and a high, hot demand or high demand leading fashion and advertising photographer. And the verbatim that I want to share about uh, the way she understands how luxury is evolving, uh, it's basically two main verbatims. No? For me, the most, important, uh, the most important one is the second one, which, listen, in luxury, there, uh, we, we have to talk about quality, not quantity, and we have to spend less but better. Uh, this is a strong commitment that I think brands should start to work around. Uh, and it's a shift of paradigm because, of course, uh, growth today is, is always linked and connected to uh, selling more, 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 and then trying to uh, generate more spending per, per capita. No? The second provider that I want to share with all of you is um, the one that uh, we were able to, uh, to, to, take, to take out from uh, Matthew Donaldson, which is a, a film director and a photographer. And uh, he shared with us uh, his vision about luxury, trying to connect luxury with time. And uh, directly providing from him is, for me, very, very representative. He's understanding that time is the ultimate luxury, something uh, that is never far from his mind. So here it's starting to get on the experiential side and on the Listen, it's not, it's not something you can own or you can master. It's something that you have to live. So it's, it's, it's uh, strictly connected to time. And so it's, it's perfectly connected with this concept of experience. Then I'm going to jump also uh, to, a, to a big entrepreneur, of course, a global leader. We had the opportunity, uh, which I'm, I'm, I really feel proud that, uh, that our, our chief editor, Nick Rice, had the opportunity to interview Richard Branson. It, it was... It was a hell of an interview, so it was fantastic. Uh, and I think uh, it, it, the verbatim that we can uh, that we can uh, take uh, from uh, Richard Branson, uh, it's it's very direct. It's it's like a life or death uh, situation. No? Uh, and I'm going to read it because I think it's it's a very it's a declaration of uh, what today leaders should be thinking about. No. Uh, and it says, uh, it says it states as following. I think as people start to realize that their own businesses are threat if they don't start to really live in the renewable space, then you'll see even more companies lacking serious action. So a very important uh, approach towards uh, renewable energy and towards uh, circular economy, towards addressing the fact that uh, uh, one-time consumption plastics. But I think the, more the, the most important uh, providing that we can take from Richard Branson is that uh, is, is the life and death one. No, it's, 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 it, and it, says, uh, it goes that, that way. All large companies today have two basic choices. Either figure out how to evolve into something that's compatible with a fair and just society, or be ready to be replaced by a business that already has, which is quite impressive coming from a man like Richard Branson, but it helps us understand the future. Listen, either you commit, either you die. It's that simple. Then uh, another interesting, another interesting conclusion that we got from a from a from a, from a generationist, which is Troy Green, super interesting. Uh, is uh, listen, um, if the people with the 10% highest emission reduce them to those of an average European, global emissions would drop by 30%. Um, starts we start understanding the magnitude of the problem here and how we should start committing today and not tomorrow, because it's a matter of life and death situation again. No? Uh, last but not least, uh, Mikael Alaros, special, uh, specialized in, uh, in circularity, in circular economy. Uh, I think uh, something that we learned from her, from her is that circular economy models are starting to, uh, of course, to pop out. And I think all leaders and company executives should take that into account. And we have, for example, a Spanish company, which is in the Inditex, that they are starting to uh, trying to uh, understand how the circular economy uh, can, can apply to their businesses. 
and the verbatim is the following. The circular economy applies this model to business. Waste become a resource and should feed back into the system to create new goods or services instead of relying on the take make waste model uh, we've become used in our current industrial practices. So here uh, again, the fact that we're going to talk about materials later on, but uh, they can, they, they, there is no high end on this uh, uh, circle of life of the material is something really interesting that we can take from, from Michaela de la Rose. And uh, I guess, sorry, last but not least, <laughs> now I really mean it. Um, I used to uh, is a respected leader in the global finance sector. Uh, so she has something to say, the way that big investors are investing their money. And the thing that we learned from her is that uh, in terms of energy, and this is a super clear statement that, 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 that took me out of the chair, is that the fashion industry alone uses more energy than aviation and shipping combined. And it's the world's second largest carbon emitter. And uh, we're talking here about a very classic industry. Uh, so we took fast fashion into a level of craziness that I think uh, as a society we should be able to address and address soon. That being said, uh, we're going to jump into the second uh, part of the presentation, which is uh, how we design for a better world, what we can do, uh, an agent, an, a small agency like us. And we're going to try to inspire you guys to understand that everybody can make a move, everybody can commit to, to a better tomorrow, how we do it uh, from Morillas, and uh, maybe inspire you guys to join this movement uh, for a better world and try to help the survival of our species. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch uh, to Pep uh, Trias, which is our lead industrial designer here at Morillas. Uh, he's one of our top specialists and gurus in the company about uh, sustainability and, and of course material discovery and, and investigation and research. So uh, Pep uh, is the one that will try to explain how we design for a better world in Morillas. Thank you, Mark. Well. Uh, how we design for a better world and friendly thinking in our design process. Let's talk about what we need to change the things. First of all, and the main important is the research. Um, we need to find new solutions. We need to find what possibilities we, we can uh, do for change. And we are not alone with that, okay? We have to uh, consult the library materials bank um, for instance, Matterplatt in Barcelona, or you can find um, Plastic Fee and Material District in Amsterdam and others um, in order to collect um, the new range of materials and possibilities. Then the never-ending question, can we do it greener? That's, that's basic, but it's really important. Every single decision that you have, um, you have a, a good uh, decision, and not with decision or more greener decision or more different decision. Then uh, there is the relation between testing and prototype. Um, this is really important as well because it doesn't make sense if you have a good design, but then you don't have tested or checked it with the software or with the technology. So you will find answers sometimes in the test, sometimes in the prototype, and this must be before the final design development. And finally, helping the client to join the revolution. Um, that's really hard work because sometimes some clients, they are open mind with this context. Um, others, they are all, always thinking of the cost and the margin. Um, the, our job here is to share with the client realistic possibilities uh, with a stock um, they can use the same machinery that they have already in the fabric, um, factory, sorry. So um, the information that we have collected in all these process, we have to display in front of them. And a simple idea is we need to empower designers uh, with this information. Uh, if you don't do this research, uh, we are kind of uh, um, partners in crime with the industry, so uh, let's use that information for the change. And three main ideas that we follow in this uh, eco thinking is it must be socially socially sustainable, um, using bio alternative, and of course repurpose and circular. 
and we can start with the with the source with the material um instead of using the um traditional plastic fossil version uh, we have several uh ways to transform i mean products and packaging um for instance the food waste the potato starch, so the vegetables that come from the sugars algae mushroom so we cannot use the one single way uh, using plastic. Um, we have to find uh, the circular solution. So um, on the market, we have realistic solutions and we have experimental as well. And that's okay. We need to share, we need to check everything. But in terms of um, design process, we have to be ready right now. We need realistic materials, um, basically locally uh, produced, like in Europe or not in the other side of the of the country. I mean, China or other other places so far. So the, basically, we have to work with the, um, the brands that are ready for the change. For this. We will share uh, three uh, examples of that, and we will start with Bartex, a cultural, a cultural heritage. What is Bartex? Um, Bartex is kind of a fabric, a uh, felt or a flex that is made from the, uh, the bark of a traditional tree in, in Uganda, and it is said that it is the most ancient textile in the history of the humanity. And every single piece of this fabric is uh, different. And we think that it's a uh, simple beauty. This, this uh, material is made for the communities in uh, Uganda. And that's, uh, I think we think is amazing because they started to produce um, this um, material uh, Okay, that's fine. Um, with the local community, and as well, they are starting to collaborate uh, in farmers in, in Brazil, Papua Guinea, and Honduras. So, this is a realistic material, uh, it's a world spread, uh, and we can do a lot of things with this material. We can cover in the walls, we can do acoustic panels, we can um, apply this in products. in and for because it's a sheet is different um it's and the, the stock is limited okay we don't have um, thousands of that it becomes a perfect luxury material for for the shows the second one is matter b and it's a solution for the single use situations the the truth is that uh, in your houses we have three four five beans and we we saw uh, we saw everything um, in several places. So what's the point? Why we cannot use a material with one single uh, bean? The idea of all in one bean. And this material is bio-based, is biodegradable, compostable, and a bioplastic. It's a top ten solution, and it's made from the um, corn star uh, cultivated in Europe. Um, this material has been in uh, more of 20 years, uh, but the, the good revolution of that is you can now print it in full color process. And that's really important because we don't have to, um, to say only with one ink or two inks we can work with full color. And here you see some samples of that. Uh, you can use, use this with uh, one single coffee pot. Port, but the, the revolution is using that uh, biodegradable plastic in the day by day packaging, okay, trays, um, bags, and it's starting to change the rules. Mm, we see this material often in bags, but we don't see it yet in the, in the basically in the um, supermarket shelf. And finally, we will share you Caroline. Um, well, the truth is we have plastics everywhere. I'm sure that now you are uh, touching 
any single piece of plastic. Um, so we can, how we can work with plastic in a better way. And that's the interesting solution. Caroline is a mix of half plastic and half uh, wooden fibers. So it's an amazing way to reduce the use of plastic, but uh, uh, change the, the way to use it. And we can choose several um, plastic, but of course the best is PLA, that is 100% uh, biodegradable, biodegradable plastic composite. So at the end of the cycle, you can um, not throw it in the compost uh, bin, but the time will disappear that, um, that piece uh, in the future. So uh, a good point of this material is the, is the, pal the color palette um, and this kind of a special texture. We, we, we don't want to copy and replay the, the shiny red colors that we are used um, as the consumer sensitivity and appreciation for sustainable materials increase the love for natural colors increases as well. That's the, that's the main characteristic of this material. And you can do long lasting um, products with uh, this particular and special texture and look that uh, it, it may be shocking, but at the end, okay, uh, we don't need the, the perfection is inside the imperfection. That's the, that's the, the book, the big power of, of Caroline. And uh, finally, we're gonna jump into the uh, third part of the presentation, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna leave to one of our top uh, our top buyer directors here at Morillas, Clara de Sousa, uh, Portuguese with experience in London and Holland and half the world. So uh, she she represents this multicultural spirit in in, in Morillas. Uh, but before that, I want to say that uh, whenever we approach any sustainable, uh, most sustainable project, uh, we need a partner in the side of materials. And I think here this project reflects the power of the Arconvert, the Gramma and Federigoni group, that they have partnered with us in the making of this great project, which is something very important for us. Uh, we wouldn't be capable to, to reach such levels of quality, of course, without having the backup of uh, paper specialists, material specialists, et cetera, et cetera, like our competitor. So I'm gonna uh, hand you over to Clara, our uh, Chief Luxury Art Director, who's gonna give you the main insights of this, this project called Canaima. Thank you, Mark. Hi, guys. Um, so basically, we wanna show you now two projects where we had the opportunity to implement this way of working and um, our best practices, what we consider our best practices. Um, it, Kanaima, uh, it, it's a client that was quite easy because it, it, he, it's a client that we say that it was trained already because it's it's a project. Um, it's a pro they do research the product and and the, the way they produce it. They do it already in a sustainable way. But um, we took the journey with them and we made sure uh, that sustainability was acquired along the process. So I'm going to present you the, the project and you can see how we how we e, introduced our practices in there. So Kanaima is a small batch gene. It was born in the Amazon um, and it carries uh, we did an untouched mystery. It's a um, it's a gene that comes really from the depths of the Amazon and is crafted with rare local botanics um, that are uh, raised in their surrounding mist. Um, so there are about 3,000 fruits on the rainforest, but only 200 are known to most. Uh, and Kanaima chose six of them. I'm not even going to try to pronounce them, but I think the names are quite unpronounceable. But you can see these are the exotic uh, six uh, botanicals that they use in their genes. So it's quite exquisite and very exotic as well. So this was this uh, exotic side uh, coming from the Amazon and the mysticism that, that, that surrounds the Amazon, it was something they really wanted to portray on their design. Um, so we were very inspired by the landscape itself, uh, uh, especially from the Kanaima Park, uh, that's where the name comes from, uh, and all the myths and, and the, the mysteries that come, that come from it. 
Um, so in a synthetic style, we try to represent these beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. um, so these, these beliefs come from the Pimonis indigenous culture, um, but that they try to, to reproduce the Tabuyes, uh, which are the mountains of the national park, uh, which is the home of spirits and the gods. Uh, uh, they believe in the power of the river. Um, so in, in this synthetic way, we try also to portray uh, the botanicals, the landscape, and the magical signs. So here I'm going to unveil uh, the graphics. Um, and you can see on the top we have the sun, on the, on, the, on the bottom we have the river, and on the bottom right we have the, the leaves from the Amazonian. And this synthetic style, and as well as the, sky, as the, the, the blunt typography, uh, the, the, we took inspiration from the petroglyphs. There, there are these ancestral uh, designs that from, uh, by civilizations they used to carve on the rocks. Uh, so from the purest nature and mysticism, uh, Kanaima Jim is, exists to carry people um, to this exotic world. Um, so this is a step that we could really um, uh, take in with uh, the journey with uh, uh, with a client, so we uh, we suggest that they use uh, a label uh, that is printed by Pedregoni Woodstock Recycle Fiber Paper, uh, which is completely biodegradable uh, and recyclable. Uh, so this was a very important step because uh, for us uh, it was um, this paper is was key for was key for us because the kind of printing that it gives us, the kind of touch that it gives us. Uh, also talks about sustainability, but uh, it, it retains uh, the quality. It's a high top ending paper. So here you can see a little bit more of uh, where we took the inspiration from the cascades that we find on the Kanema Park, and you can see it around the neck label, where, where we, in a synthetic way, we designed the river, the waves. And uh, this is the key visual we've produced. Um, so here we try to portray uh, this, construct, this contrast uh, between light and shadow that really takes us to the mysticism uh, of this land of, from the Amazon. So you can see that the bottle has a kind of aura uh, around it, uh, which um, gives the feeling of being very mystic and, the, and uh, unveils the secrets of the Amazon and the rare botanics of this gene. And to, here are some crops, um, some more details where you can see uh, on the top right, we give a little bit more information uh, of the botanicals uh, that come, they used to produce the gene. Um, also uh, for the, the next table, we use a raw mater material traditional uh, from this land, which is the leather. So in every aspect, we try we, we try to to portray this image of sustainability. And just to finalize, uh, Kanaima uh, gives the 10% of the sales to support the NGOs, so they do improve the quality of these indigenous communities, um, and they do also collaborate against the deforestation of the Amazonians through the Saving the Amazon or Saving the Amazon Global. So. This, the, this case was very, uh, I mean, the client already had a mindset, a sustainable mindset in there. So uh, our paper here um, as the company uh, was to go with them on a journey and really try to, um, to, 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 say, to tell them what was the best stock to use uh, and the best quality stock and, and just to, to portray this mysticism as well. So we try as hard as we could. I think we 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 achieved, and this is just to finalize a view of the Kanaima gene with its own rare botanicals. So this is Kanaima gene, and I'm going to pass to back to present another one where we we could introduce this uh, sustainable practice uh, that we have in Mauritius. Thank you, Clara. Uh, Abanka. Let's talk about banking. It's a project of interior design. Um, and the good point is to transform all the relationship between the customer and the banking. Um, and the question was, they used to call me bank. A little bit of context. Uh, Banca is the bank board of the union between two Galician regional entities. Um, for, 
the people who don't know where is Galicia. Galicia is in the northwest of Spain. Um, it's a beautiful uh, place, uh, really connected with the landscape and with a strong tradition, uh, even with uh, Celtic roots and uh, really uh, Atlantic weather. And the project uh, it was driving by a deep desire to do something brave and different. And we started with the, with the point of in the age of technology, there is a greater need for the human touch than ever before. Um, of course, banking has been suffering a bad prestige for years and uh, the change of interior design um, was the opportunity to change as well um, the way and the process and the choreography between um, the bank clerk and the customer. And uh, of course, uh, forget the call, um, minimal and call a relation than before. And two main purposes of the project was um, really connection with the territory. Um, we didn't want kind of a urban fancy uh, style disconnected from the, the local uh, environment. And of course, all the decisions that we took, we were the most sustainable as possible. And we started for the materials um, selection. Uh, we, we choose uh, local materials um, connected with the um, small uh, soapiers of the area, uh, for instance, uh, granite, uh, natural slate, um, wood, uh, local wood as well, marble, some ceramics, and all these war materials, they were mixed with the white canvas of the walls. Here, I will make a, a fast overview of the space. The idea of the white canvas, it was great. And then we mix it with the, all these collection of materials with the open space concept. Um, uh, blue wall, the blue is the color of the brand, only just use it in that point, um, divide the public area and the more public area with tables, uh, with a more comfortable seating area, like a library or club style. Um, the counters uh, were transformed to high tables. And this was a really good point of the project because the uh, the view between the customer and the blanket was in the same, and it was a high time decision to okay, um, relate with the customer face to face without jerky and, and, and more clothes, of course. Then we have an uh, online banking point, and of course, as well, an area with more specific and more uh, private. Uh, accounts. Uh, it was a solution for the big diversity of customers. And um, okay, the, um, the feedback of the chains uh, has been overwhelming. But let's go to the point uh, of the organic is the new black. When we choose the local uh, good, we find an opportunity to create a positive impact beyond the space design. And we opted for the local uh, eucalyptus food. Um, what happens with the eucalyptus in Galicia? Mm, that tree was introduced maybe 50 years ago, uh, basically for made pool paper because it's not a uh, high quality material. But the problem after uh, so much time is it's a mess because this tree is uh, it's mixing with the local uh, wood forest, it's changing the biodiversity of Galicia, and the worst is that is spreading the the wildfires in that area because all the bark of the tree um, transforms um, the the floor of the forest. So we we find a problem when we come back to a. a a solution. So um, we transform all the furniture, all the wood of the, of the space was made with eucalyptus wood, which is the, the a, a cheap uh, material because we, we find a, shop, a local software that was trying to test and we transform the, the sheets of the wood 
in Plaidu. Uh, so we, we have a, a seed solution and we have a, a powerful decision. And just a reminder of all the um, different tables that we designed. Um, and it was each table was designed for a specific um, commercial relationship with the, with the customer. And finally, a little bit of data um, with an average of 25 pieces of furniture for each office. Um, Avanca have uh, more than 700 offices in and out of Galicia. So uh, we are talking about uh, a lot, a lot of tables and a lot, a lot of materials. All, of, all are made in, in Galicia um, for a small uh, workshops of good. So um, in this case, it's not uh, a shouting idea of sustainability, but in the fact, um, it's, uh, it's a way to make luxury, but not always using the, the recycled and rough uh, finishes, just only you choose the uh, original material. And that point, it was uh, a win-win because beyond a change of image, it was the time to reinvent the concept of banking and simultaneously helping the biodiversity of Galicia. Um, reconnect the customer and the bank and being sustainable. Okay, that's all well, for today. Was, that was it. Uh, gracias a todos, uh, which we say in Spanish. Thank you very much for your kind attention and your time. Uh, just a final statement from Marias. Uh, sustainability has been one of our top corporate priorities uh, since the last five years. Uh, sustainability has become a must. I mean, uh, everybody can can uh, become part of, of, of this chain that humanity and as a society that we have to undertake. Uh, all companies, all people, individuals, big corporation, executive, uh, trainees, everybody can make a big change. From Morias, we are trying to 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 bring our little our little grain. Uh, I think I translated just a, a very Spanish exception. Nuestro pequeño grano de arena. We're trying to to put a little bit uh, to, to generate a small impact from trying to convince great leaders and, and of course great people that that want to undertake uh, fully committed projects with sustainability and sustainability don't take sustainability just as something related uh, to being a hippie connected with the green stuff and, and environment uh, take it take it on the more transversal and serious side sustainability has to do with integration with fighting poverty with helping to raise children around the world with better quality with uh, greater opportunities for everybody trying to reduce the gender gap so everything we do try to try to be aligned with these uh, uh, sustainable development goals established by the un as the 2030 plan for the world and i think uh, this would be of course have a great impact for the world but also a greater impact for your business and your pnl so thank you very much guys for your time it has been a pleasure and of course now time for the for the q a we are just uh, two minutes late, which for being a Spaniard is quite a record. Uh, so again, thank you for, for your for your patience. Very well. So thank you very much, Mark, uh, Clara, Pep, for these incredible contents as said in advance by Mark. Now it's time for Q&A session, so please write your questions in the chat box and we will try to answer all of them. We have time. So here we have the, the first one and quite interesting. Uh, so do you understand sustainability as something strictly connected to environment? Uh, well, I think we, we're going to try to answer all of us from our perspective. I think, first of all, sustainability is a very big word. Uh, it's a very big word that is not only connected to the environment, of course, it's connected with an attitude, an attitude of uh, respect with the environment, but also respect with humanity, respect with people in general. No? We as a society, we cannot accept anymore the huge differences that we have been accepting for the past uh, generations and, and years. Uh, we can have uh, a developed country and then an underdeveloped one where children can have access to water or food 
and that they mothers they need to walk 20, 40, 50 kilometers just to get five gallons of water. It's something that we cannot accept anymore. It's a matter of seriousness and, and, and survival. So it's not only being greener, that of course we have to do it if we want to survive uh, uh, for the, and, and we, we want to provide a better world for the next generations, but it's also fighting about, uh, fighting against injustice, fighting, uh, fighting for integration, for equality. So don't take, uh, in Moria, yes, at least, we, don't, we do not take sustainability as something limited to the environment, but as something greater that starts from this very table where uh, we need to reduce some things that are just incredible uh, to understand that uh, they happen in the history of mankind, which is gender gap, for example. No? Uh, and this, of course, is not, is not connected to, to, to the environment. Yeah, no, I think I think the same. Like you cannot can't only um, you can't only think of environmental sustainability. You can you need to think of social and economic sustainability sustainability as well. It's a big word um, because one will affect the other. Like to implement any change in the environment, you need to change the conscience of the people. And you, you for instance, as Mark was saying, in a, in inequality as well needs to be addressed, and it's about economic uh, companies uh, need to start investing in this. So you, you you need you need money, you need the people to change the world for this sustainability to, to become alive, no? to, in order to progress. So it's these three pillars. Hmm. Yeah, um, for ending, um, I really love the the, the quote. Um, there is no planet planet B, and it's our planet is our, our home. And of course, uh, we are talking about rivers, forests, um, but we are talking as well of uh, climate change, um, rising temperatures, and we cannot change um, this without uh, changing the way what we produce and the way that we design. Yeah, sustainability is the only answer to human extinction right now. So let's be dramatic, <laughs> but it's as yeah, clear as that. There's no plan B. We have that, yeah. uh, that is affecting that change. Hmm. I hope yeah, we answered. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So second question, how do you convince your clients to invest in sustainable cultures? I guess it's not easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this is a very tough question. Uh, first of all, uh, we are starting to see and to meet some clients that they don't need to be convinced. They don't need to be convinced because they 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 have been facing the reality uh, as it is. No, uh, we are facing a global warming crisis. It might be too late, so we might start to accept that the humankind can be extinct in in not so many hundreds of years. So it's it's really a life or, or death uh, decision here. So uh, if you want to live a better world for your child, for our child, if you want to ensure that the cultural heritage of more than a hundred thousand years uh, can be preserved, uh, the fact that we want that the, we still have answers, uh, sorry, questions to answer as a society and as humankind. If we want to answer those questions, we need to turn sustainable right now. I mean. And it, uh, we have a lot of clients that they already understood that and they are working really hard from supply chain, from finance, uh, from economics, trying to uh, integrate the circular economy concept into their uh, corporate economy. So we have a lot of them that they already understood the concept. And when we face uh, some of them that we, they still don't get the importance of uh, incorporating the sustainability value into their brand equities, uh, uh, then we have a tough conversation, no? Because it's uh, it's uh, normally it ends up discussing about the PNL, but it's it's really easy. Either you turn sustainable and you invest today in order to survive tomorrow, or you better start closing your business, and spending and spending your money in Florida and buying a house there, and and, and, and start shutting down. No, um, it's it's always a matter of discussion of cost, uh, but I think the cost of not investing in sustainable products and, and attitudes. I think the cost will be far more, let's say, important uh, than the than the, than than the opportunity or, or the, the income. No? Yeah, you cannot only look to the immediate incomes and the immediate profit. Like you need to look at it in a in a more in a longer in the longer term, right? So I think that's the shift we're starting to perceive from, the, from mm -hmm. our own clients. 
what we do though is for example with uh, clara and of course pep team we try to do because the message uh, from pep was was really clear no, listen let's propose to a client uh, solutions that are implementable that are yeah. that are possible that means that we see the idea of progress we do not see perfection and with this idea the client sometimes they change their mind because we try to listen let's let's start looking for progress not perfection no let's look for something that is already in the market that fits your cost limit structuring and that uh, is uh, it's possible to be, to be implemented in your supply chain and your machinery so this is already a huge step so let's start little by little and i think with with that message we are able to start uh, making things uh, a little bit different and just for instance the luxury brands they have more margin and we have to use that okay yeah. um, and then okay the industry leaders sometimes okay, of course they are um greenwashing the the advertising sometimes but they they must be uh, cleaner during the process as well okay where they come where they, they buy the sugar where they buy the ingredients where they buy the leather um how job is from them and the design our job is to to help them to change the the paradigm, the paradigm. Um, some brands um yeah really are really in this point um some of them not at all um but that's that's the fight okay we are really for help them to the change that's that's very the well. point very well thank you very much third question what's the real return of investing in sustainability well, first of all, uh, if we take seriously the development sustainable goals for 20 and, and the global plan for 2030, uh, polluting the world is, will become very expensive. This is number one issue. So uh, normally changing a corporate culture, changing a global company takes time. So if we understand that in 2030, polluting the world will become very expensive, we should start adapting our, our supply chain and our industrial processes right now because it's going to become very expensive. And we, you, you can already ask that to the European airline industry. Uh, for example, the European airline industry, or the, uh, due to the agreements of Paris and Tokyo, uh, they have been starting to take serious action uh, in order to compensate for the carbon emission. And I think uh, they are doing it well, no? So first of all, start preparing for 2030 because if you don't change, it's going to become way more expensive. Second, uh, you will have a social direct return of your employees and your clients. Uh, new generations, such as the Generation uh, Z, they are starting to look for uh, more transparent, committed, and of course, sustainable and, and respectful products. And those generations will soon become your customers, will soon represent a very important part of the global spending. So you, start be, you better be start, wor uh, start worrying about how to attract them because Again, you're going to be losing a very important side of the pie. So, first of all, it's going to be it's going to become more expensive to be uh, to keep polluting the world. Second, you're going to start losing your base of potential clients. And third, um, and I think most important is that if you want to attract talent, and talent also starts by the new generations. If you want to hire people that have the ability to understand uh, the new paradigm of the new societies, the the way that this omnichannel uh, world works. Uh, you, you need to start understanding that your culture, the way you do things, have the ability to attract the best talent. Talent today is not attracted by money, it's attracted by the strength of the project and the commitment uh, with a better world and, and the commitment with societies and the commitment with the community. So, uh, for me, the return is absolutely clear, it's magnanimous. First of all, it's a matter of cost. Being sustainable, it's going to become more competitive in the in, in, soon, in 2030. Second, you're going to be start gaining new clients into your pipe. So more, uh, you're going to be able to grow quicker. Uh, and uh, third, you're going to be able to attract top talent. So this combination, I think, has a clear return, re immediate return, financial and economic return, and of course, social and, and, and uh, say community return, which is also very important in the, in the equation. Yeah, it's clear, very well. And uh, well, John Morsik, so the last question, what's the action call from Morillas to convince company owners to executive 
uh, and executives to join the future? Well, uh, first of all, is that uh, something that maybe five to ten years ago seemed impossible, seemed uh, science fiction, today is possible. Today, with just small action and uh, a small act of leadership, you can turn the, your company upside down. We have the materials, we have the knowledge, we have the possibility. Uh, the, the world is already working on, on new systems that will, um, let's say, will give the opportunity to, to, to company owners to, to implement new sustainable solutions. So the opportunity is here. Uh, we have the experience, we have the materials. It's just a matter of leadership. Either you understand that the world, that better tomorrow starts today, either you want to close your company down. So if in, 20, in not 20, but 10 years, you want, still, you, want still, uh, you want still to see your business in operation, growing and adapting to new times, uh, it's better that you start investing in sustainability today. Very well. Thank you very much, Mark, Clara, Pep. It has been a pleasure. Very interesting. Now time is over. Uh, and well, for all the audience, if you like it, this webinar, we are looking forward to receiving you again on October 29th uh, at our coming event with our world, with the world renowned Design Studio Stranger and Stranger with the title Telling Stories with Paper. Nothing else, you can follow us on social profiles to register. Thank you very much uh, to Morillas for this uh, interesting uh, webinar, for this interesting webinar uh, presentation. And well, See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.